Remember our first video in October when we demonstrated how to prepare amaryllis bulbs for dormancy so that they bloom when you want them to? Well, in today's video, we will show you what has happened since then and discuss the results. In the first video, we dug up several mature bulbs and prepared them for a six weeks dormancy period. This three, these three bulbs we placed in a dark room and the remainder we placed in a secluded spot in the nursery. We have now come to the end of the dormancy period, so let us see what has happened. It is now time to examine the damage that was done, if any. First, let me take the big guy. Interestingly, when I went to relieve him from the dark room, he had already started pushing up. Uh, I am presuming this is a flower stalk, but we will see. So this one is healthy. It also has uh, evidence of growth. Coming here, this is a little bulbil. So as you see, we had taken off all of the roots. So there was nothing really feeding the bulb except its own storage food. And just to show, for the six week period, we had put it in a container, a porous container, and with some perlite at the bottom. And every two weeks, I just went in for a minute and dampened the perlite and the newspaper. So the base of the bulb was kept damp, but we did not water the bulb at all. So this one is, Pretty nice, healthy. The expectation is that within six weeks, these bulbs should be blooming. So we're going to be planting them today in a container, putting them all three together. So when they bloom, they do make a show. All right, quickly, let's examine the other bulbs and intact, no soft spots, very firm, pretty good. The third one, oh, well, this one has evidence of a little bulbil coming out. So all in all, I think the three bulbs survived the cold, the dark treatment. And you, you, you understand my trepidation because after all, this was the first time I was doing it. So, so far, so good. In selecting this container to plant them, I'm being mindful of the recommendation that Amaryllis does not like a lot of space. So the three of them are going to be rather cozy. So we've planted the three bulbs and uh, recall that you're not supposed to bury the entire bulb, leave about a quarter or so of the bulb exposed, which is what we've done. This potting mix has uh, two parts soil, one part compost and one part perlite. So the nutrients in the compost should be sufficient for the the growth, the early growth of the amaryllis bulbs. I'm going to just water, make sure everything is settled in. We're leaving this container here in this location. This is a, this receives bright but indirect sunlight. But I also want to give you a look at the other bulbs. They got the same treatment as these that were placed in the dark room, but they were kept in the nursery. They were topped in the same manner at the same time, kept in the nursery. And look at what has happened in six weeks. They've sent out the bulbils that have emerged above the surface of the soil. The main leaves, nice and healthy, are coming up. And sooner or later, we will get the flower stalks. So just to show the four that were there for comparison, as the camera pan, this seemed to have been, yeah, the best looking one. This one is, has emerged, but a single leaf. So they all, I mean, they're really impressive, the level of growth in six to eight weeks. It's 10 weeks since our amaryllis experiment begun. Time for the big reveal. And just to remind you, the reason why we undertook this exercise was to, for us to determine what we needed to do 
to have amaryllis rebloom on schedule under our conditions. The mature bulbs that we had, we divided them into three groups. This first group of four plants, they were cut and repotted, but placed in the nursery. The second group of three plants, they were also cut, all the leaves were removed, but these got a dark treatment. They were put in a dark room for six weeks. This third group was repotted and placed in the nursery to continue growing. So it had least shock of them all. Here are the results. The first group that stayed in the, remained in the nursery and the nursery was rather dark. I think we have the equivalent of a 90% shade cloth covering over it. The first group after six weeks in the nursery, it was they were taken out and placed in an area that gets a fair amount of indirect sunlight. So it's six weeks in the nursery, four weeks since we took it out of the nursery, a total of 10 weeks. And this is the growth. All of these leaves are new. They were produced in the last what, 10 weeks or so. But more importantly, what we were really aiming at is to determine how quickly they would start to bloom. At the end of the 10 week period, lovely foliage and more importantly what we wanted to see really fantastic blooms this was the first plant of all of them that we have in the in the experiment this sent out a bloom first and it's actually sending out a second one so within 10 weeks we were able to get it to bloom within the allotted time and we could say success but even more importantly of the four there are three of the four that are now sending out um, bloom on schedule the second one, within a week or so, that should be opening up. And this little guy back here just emerged a few days ago. So in the group that was cut, repotted, and placed in the nursery, lovely foliage. And we, if we compute it, it's about a 75% success in terms of getting them to bloom on schedule. The second group, there were three lovely bulbs and they were cut trimmed and placed in the dark room as i said they've been out of the dark room now about uh, four weeks they were planted in this window box and within the four week period we have one bulb that's about to burst open that is very good the second bulb is also sh showing a flower uh, stalk emerging but the, this one this big healthy bulb is growing sending out leaves but no no blooms as yet, so we keep an eye on that. The overall success for the ones that were treated in the dark room, I, we would say, what, two out of three, 66 percent success. So group three that was not cut, but, and it was placed in the nursery, but not cut. We are looking at one flower stalk out of four. So that's overall, ooh, hold on, on. Here's a little one coming up, nice. So guess what? I just noticed that and it's a good time to pause and point out what you're really looking for when you're trying to determine if it is a flower, stalk coming up or a leaf. The difference is the leaves come from the middle, from the center of the, the bulb. And if we pan around, you see here's a nice, what looks like it's coming out of a side pocket. So that's definitely a bloom coming up. Yeah, once you know to look to see if it's coming up at the side or in the middle, then you can indeed pick out a flower stalk such as this at a very early stage. So at this point, we will say we have a 50% success with those that were not cut and placed in the nursery. We're happy with the results, but it's never a good idea to jump to conclusions with just one experiment, is it? And I think it's safe to say that based on the results here that cutting the bulb uh, forces blooming a little earlier than those that are not cut. The other observation from my point of view is that there is really little need to place your bulb in a very dark room. At uh, this time of the year, November, December, the lighting conditions are such that placing them in a nursery or even in a shady spot should give you the reduced light that the plants need during dormancy. We will have every opportunity 
to <laughs> repeat this experiment throughout the year and certainly by the end of next year we should have more definitive uh, results for you we've come to the end of a wonderful year 2021 i guess everything that's been happening propel us into doing a youtube channel at the start of the year we didn't have that at all in our mind but as we had more time to work on the garden and things just kept blooming and blooming we thought we would share it with persons since fewer persons were coming to visit us it's been seven months since we've started sharing our garden with you i mean we've really enjoyed doing it hope you have too we want to thank all of you who have been watching and sending in comments. The fact of getting over 28,000 views in that period of time, totally unknown at the beginning, but we consider that a huge success for our first effort. We want to thank you, wish you all the best for the holiday season coming up. And just to end on a really bright note, we have assembled some of the things that we've worked on over the last few, few months and that we will continue to work on um, in 2022. If you like what we've been doing, as to do those of you who have not subscribed, please subscribe. And for those of you who like to share, share it with all your friends. There are lots of ideas as I walk around the garden. There are lots of things to show. And we don't discriminate. We show vegetables, we see food, we show flowers, and we will continue to do so. So for all of you out there, have a wonderful holiday season and check us again in January when we will be happy to share more of our garden with you.